day. I hope you're having an amazing day. Let me know how you are in the comments. Today, I'm gonna be talking about how I went from a C to an A in A-level chemistry. Now, the reason that I tried to get to an A or an A-star is because that's what I needed to get into medical school. But whatever grade you're aiming for, whatever grade you're achieving, you're doing amazing because A-level chemistry is hard like very hard. But yeah, if you are aiming for an A and you're struggling, then maybe have a watch of this video and it could be helpful. So first up is a little story time to explain to you what happened with me in A-level chemistry. Like I've already said, I found it really hard. So basically I neglected it for all of sixth form. I just stayed on top of my notes, but if I didn't understand something, I pretty much ignored it and pretended it didn't exist. So then when it actually got to the A-levels, I ended up spending all of Easter, about two weeks of Easter, intensely focusing on chemistry alone. Luckily, it worked out for me because I loved my other two subjects, geography and biology, and I had been keeping on top of them anyway. However, if I hadn't, I don't know what would have happened. So I don't recommend a two-week intense chemistry revision cram at the end of the A-level years because it was highly stressful, highly unnecessary and if I went back I would do it differently. So I thought in this video I would tell you the things that did work for me while I was doing chemistry but I also thought I'd tell you what I'd do differently because that's actually helpful too. The first thing I'd do is stay on top of my work as the year went on. Staying on top of notes as soon as the lesson is over. Like yes I had all my notes by Easter but that was because of other notes cramming sessions in other holidays days, if that makes sense. So instead of doing that, I'd recommend that at the end of the day or on one of the days of the weekend after school, you just go through and make sure that all your notes for that week are done and up to date, that you're on top of the work that you've just done. Secondly, I would have done extra revision on topics that I found hard immediately after being taught the topic. When I found something hard, like I said, I literally just ignored it and that made it really difficult at the end. So if you're finding something difficult in your chemistry lessons or you don't understand something, try and fix that issue straight away, either by rereading the notes on the topic, looking through the textbook, doing some questions, and if you're really stuck, then go and ask your teacher Teacher, hopefully they'll be able to help with whatever it is that you're struggling with. If you make sure you're understanding as you go along, it will be a lot easier to revise the content by the end because you already understand it. It's just about putting it into your memory. The third thing I would have done is kind of related to the first two things, but I would have revised properly for end of topic tests. So I think most schools do this, but at my school, we used to have end of topic tests. So after we'd finished one module or one topic of the A-level, we'd have a test on it. And like I said, I was ignoring chemistry the whole time. These were the tests I would get C's in, like maybe D's, maybe B's, just kind of ignored them. And I only did the bare minimum of revision instead of making sure I thoroughly understood the content and like knew how to smash the test. However, if I could go back, I'd make sure I properly revise for the test as if I was revising for my actual exam because it would mean that half of my learning was already done by the time it got to exams. It's so much easier to recall knowledge if you've properly revised it and understood it before. And I think maybe even revising for those tests could have bumped me up to the next grade. I don't know if it would, but it's a possibility, I guess. Yeah, I think staying on top of that, revising for those end of topic exams is really gonna like take you up that level in your A-level. Even though there's a few things I would have done differently, it wasn't all bad. There are a few things that I did which I would advise other people to do and recommend, so I'm gonna tell you about those things too. Firstly, I absolutely loved the CGP guides. You've probably heard of them if you're in the UK doing A-levels. So the CGP guides are basically these books that really break down A-level content for you. The Chemistry A-level CGP guides helped me understand extremely complex pieces of knowledge that I just couldn't understand in class. Reading through that guide was literally a lifesaver and I did 
every single question in the guide because there's little questions at the end of each page and then there's a set of questions at the end of every topic. I did every single one to ensure that my understanding was there and I found that so helpful. The guides just have really great explanations for difficult concepts so if there's something in class that's just not working out the guide is definitely a great place to go. People say that it doesn't get you to the top grade, the A-star grade, but I found it such a good foundation and such a useful resource to get my understanding and knowledge increased. The second thing that I did and would recommend is using the specification and doing lots of past paper questions. The specification is everything you need to know, so if you're making sure you're going through that whilst revising, you should be equipped with everything you need to know. And then the past paper questions from previous exams and their mark schemes also tell you everything you need to know. With A-levels, the mark schemes give a lot away about how the exam board likes to mark their questions, what they want you to pick up from a question. So practicing them and marking them yourselves is really gonna get you in the right mindset to answer exam questions from that exam board for that subject. The third thing that I did do a lot of and would recommend is ask for help. I also said this in the sort of other bit of what I would go back and do is that if you don't understand the topic, immediately ask for help. What I did was when I started panicking, I asked for help. But regardless, asking for help is the way to go. Just pester your teachers until they give you the answers that you're looking for because they're the ones with the knowledge, they know what the exam board's looking for and if no other thing you've tried has worked, just ask them and hopefully they will impart their wisdom on you and hopefully it will help clear things up. That was just a super quick summary of some of my chemistry A-level advice. Best of luck if you're currently in your A-level years. You're doing amazing just for getting through them, honestly. I know it's hard, but it's going to be over soon and so worth it. Please do go ahead and message me with any questions about chemistry A-level or medicine or just anything to do with my channel or anything you want to know basically. I don't know why I made that so long. But yeah, I really hope this video helped you. Again, best of luck. You're gonna smash it. I believe in you. You should believe in you. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed.